You're a holy God. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here together. The Bible says wherever two or three will gather in the midst, the Lord said he would be here himself. And I believe we're, we're here together and you're here with us today, Lord. We ask you now to bless every song, every person in a special way. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, holy God. We worship thee. We praise thee. We glorify thee. We thank you, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just reach up to heaven and just ask God to touch you today. Bless you. Amen. Bless them, Lord. Bless us today, O God. As we come before thy presence with thanksgiving in our heart. And we're gracious. You're gracious and kind and loving. We give you praise and glory in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. In that name of Jesus Christ, we praise you. In that name of Jesus. In that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, I feel the presence of God here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seen. Thank you. Just appreciate uh, what God has been doing here at our church. Amen. Got quite a few folks down today, so you remember that prayer. Some of them are battling spiritual warfare. Kids are acting up all over the place. Amen. 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 <laughs> Everybody go get a switch at the church and we'll like No, we won't do that. We love it. Well, well, I got an amen back there. Right. That's okay. I'm going to blame it on the weather. Is that all right? Is that I can blame it on the weather? Because it kind of acts up the weather does. Amen. We do got some announcements like to make for you. Remember Bev Halbert? She has a birthday, and also Chris, he has a birthday this week. Amen. Also, Ray, how about that? A whole bunch of birthdays coming up. And Jeff, how about that? You got a birthday too, Jeff, huh? I'm kidding. You know, they're all turning 25 again. They are. 25. That works for them, doesn't it? And John has a birthday coming up. Dean and Kenny. Wow, June's a busy month, isn't it not? Mm -hmm. So we just want to wish them a happy birthday. I think today is, a, we haven't reached the 12th yet, have we? Today's the 12th. Today's the 12th. Yeah. Well, let's do a happy birthday for them. Happy birthday to you. treasure chest. He must think there's uh, something in there. What do you think? A picnic lunch. What do you think? How many remember the old Yogi? Boy, that tells you I'm pretty old if you remember Yogi Bear. What he said. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's a good first stage. <laughs> anyway, we just want to say happy birthday to the other. Let us pray for him today. Father, Thank you for allowing these to have birthdays in our congregation today. And we just want to celebrate it with them. And Father, we ask you to bless each one of them. Bless them, Lord, as it's a special day in their life. And it is a special day because they were born on this day. And Father, you made each one of them unique and different. And we thank you for that, Father. We ask you now, Lord, that you have your hand upon them. And that you bless them throughout the day and throughout the week. And throughout the month, God, and the rest of the year even. We just want you to prosper them and bless them, Father. Thanks again for allowing us to celebrate their birthdays with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give them a big clap off for everyone. Amen. I feel so excited. Melody's going to take you all out for dinner today, so don't worry about it. She didn't say that. She said bean soup. She said you get bean soup. I go wrap it up.
Well, June the 14th is prayer meeting, and June the 15th is Bible study. And guess what? Father's Day is what? June the 19th. Next week, right? Yep. Next week is Father's Day. So I guess the kids got something coming up for the dads. So guess what? All you dads, make sure you get Kids have been working on some projects for you. At least I think. Am I right when I say that? Yes. And so anyway, we just want you dads to feel welcome and because you're important. I don't know about you, but what would the world be like without mom? But what would it be like without dad? My goodness. I'm so glad that we have our fathers. Can you say amen to that? I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward today and receive the tithe and offering. Here they come. Here's one of them. And how about I borrow you? Here you go. You, you straighten out. I got my eye on both of you. Especially. Uh, I don't know. I just got my eye on you. Everybody get your eyes up. Always. <laughs> Let us pray. May the Lord bless the offering today. And we're thankful for being in God's house. We ask you now, bless these young people, Lord. We appreciate it. The Bible says train them up in the ways. And that's what we're doing. We're training them up in the ways of the Lord. And Lord, we thank you for them participating with us today. And Lord, we ask you to bless this offering for its intended use today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Keep you. What a fellowship. Of my heart. 
as we continue. Amen. I don't know about you, but God is good. And I appreciate you so very much. Amen. Appreciate the Lord. He's been doing so wonderful things. Uh, even though we might not need the rain, but he continues to send it to us to keep our lawns wet green, to keep our forests green. Amen. And usually by this time of the year, it begins to dry out quite a bit. But I'm thankful for the rain still. How about you? And because uh, I know in New Mexico, they've got wildfires everywhere. And you guys pray for those folks down in the New Mexico area. Wildfires completely all through the state. And what's sad, you know, what happens after all the wildfires come, then all the rains come, and then they have mudslides everywhere. And so that's why I'm fearful that's going to happen to them when wintertime comes. And then you'll be reading about massive mudslides everywhere. And, you know, I'm just thankful that God keeps enough rain around here just to keep everything green and looking good. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. It's kind of sometimes when it does rain, it, you don't get the things done you like to get done, like the things outside. The other day, Sister Brooke jumped on the lawnmower and he mowed the lawn. I said, well, it's going to rain tomorrow. I can feel it coming. Sister Brooke mowed the lawn. Can you say that? <laughs> and uh, usually every time someone mows their lawn or washes their car. Right. How many found that out? Oh, yeah. When you mow the lawn or wash your car. So if you want it to rain, it hasn't been raining in a while, get out and wash your car. Amen? I guarantee it probably will rain. <laughs> and that's the way it usually does. But I want you to know, God is opening our eyes of our hearts. Why? Because I believe he's planning something big. I mean, something that is huge. Something that never has happened before. God is planning this. And I believe it's going to be a great awakening. A great revival throughout the land. I believe God is going to Pour out his spirit in these last days upon all flesh. As the Bible speaks about it in the book of Acts chapter 2. For it said that in the last days that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Upon everyone. He said your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And speak in tongues. Can you say amen? Your old men, your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream my dreams before the great and notable day of the Lord. And I've been having dreams and visions of things that I believe are going to happen. And you and I need to just strap ourselves in with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And get ready for the ride of our lives. Can you say amen? Because I believe the Son of God is going to come back. How about you? Amen. <laughs> But before he comes, he wants us to open our eyes. Open our eyes and see the coming of the Lord. Amen. Open the eyes of our heart that we'll understand these things. That he's wanting us to participate in true worship. God wants us to obtain true worship with him. Amen. And today I felt the Holy Spirit. How about you? Mm-hmm. It's becoming stronger and stronger. And as the spirit becomes stronger and stronger, so will the spiritual warfare. It will become stronger and stronger in your lives. But I want you to press on, amen. Press on and press deeper with the Lord. Walk closer to God now than you ever have before, amen. Walk closer to the Lord. Press in and allow the Lord to bless you. Because guess what? That is the whole reason the enemy has brought spiritual warfare against you. To drive you away from the presence of the Lord. You don't want him to drive you away. Amen? When he begins to try to run you off or chase you off, that is the time you need to press in and say, I'm going to serve God no matter what. I'm going to serve God no matter what. I don't care if gasoline goes to $10 a gallon. I'm going to praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Yeah. I'm going to serve God. I don't care what it costs for food. I will praise the Lord. And if I run out of food, 
all I need to do is pray, and he will feed, he will fill the basket with fishes and bread. Can you say amen? amen. Our God shall supply our every need according to his what? Riches. His wealth, riches, his wealth and glory. We'll paraphrase it a little bit. His wealth and glory. God is the supplier of our needs. Amen? Amen. I found out. I found out when man gets involved, it falls apart. But when God takes over, it comes back together again. Can you say amen? <laughs> Would you pray with me today? Father, I ask you now to touch me and anoint me. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, whom I love and whom I honor and whom I serve with all of my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength, I serve him. He is my Lord, and you are my God, and I worship and praise you, my Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. Father, I thank you for this time to come together. I ask you now to anoint me. Anoint this vessel of clay, that I may become the vessel that you want me to be, that I may do God's will and God's bidding in these last days. Oh, God, touch the eyes of my heart. Touch my heart, God. Touch the eyes of my heart, God, that I may see your wondrous works, that I may see your wonderful will, that I may see your glory and your honor, oh, God, that I can praise you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might and strength. Open my eyes, oh, God. Open my eyes. Let him or her that heareth, that listeneth, they may hear what the Spirit may reveal to them. In that name of Jesus, I praise you. Amen, amen. <laughs> amen. As we continue, Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth what? Evil things. Jesus said to them, you, you white wall sepulchers, you full of dead man bones, you, you hypocrite, you scribes, you Pharisees. This is what he was calling them. He was telling them, let me tell you something. He said, let me share this to you again. You being evil, speak good things. He said, what's the matter with you? There's nothing good coming from your heart. Nothing good. As he rebuked those people, as he rebuked the elders of Israel. Let me tell you something. The only one that's good is God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> only God is good. As we continue, the first sacrificial praise comes from the treasure chest of our hearts. The psalmist said in chapter 9 of the book of Psalms, verse 1, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will praise thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high, when my enemies are turned back. I'm going to praise you, Lord, because it's out of the treasure of my heart. My treasure is my heart, my friend. Can you say amen? Jesus said, why are you trying to save up treasures in this world where moth and rust corrupt and destroy? He said, don't try to save it. He said, save it in heaven because he said you'll be what? very wealthy. Can you say amen? I don't know about you, Christian friend, but if there's anything in my heart, it's in my treasure chest. Can you say it? It's the treasure that God has gave me. It's that spiritual treasure that you and I need to see in these last days. You and I need to offer up what the sacrifice of praise. Can you say amen? The sacrifice of joy. Can you say amen? The sacrifice of peace in our life. I don't know about you, but God wants you and I to sacrifice it and get to the word that can you say amen. But how can I do that, Pastor? By turning your attention back to God. Amen. There's so much distraction in the world right now. Put your phone down. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hang it up. Can you say that? Hang it up. Amen. Take out time for God. Take out time and pray. Take out time and thank God for what he's doing in your life. 
Amen. I don't know about you, but if you got a car and you got gas in it, you're doing good. Can you say amen? amen. You got a home and you got bread on your table, you're doing good. Come on, say amen. Because I see a lot of homeless out there. Let me tell you, they're just sitting there on the sidewalks and looking at the world going by them. And let me tell you something, a lot of them just don't have nothing. One day me and Sister Brill was parked somewhere, I forgot where we were parked at, and we watched one guy come by with three shopping carts. And he was pushing one and dragging one with his hand like this. And he had pushed that one up about 20, maybe 30 feet and pulled the other one with it. Then he'd go back and he had reached back about 30 feet or more and grabbed the third one and pulled it up to where the other two were at. And I shared to Sister Pruitt, I said, everything that man has in the world is in those three shopping carts. Mm -hmm. Everything that man has, it's in those three shopping carts. I don't know about you, friend, but if you can come to church and still give God glory, isn't it worth it? Can you say amen? amen. Is it, it might be a sacrifice to come, but it's worth it. It's worth it, my friends. Why? Because God loves us. He loves each of us. And it's up to you and me to offer that sacrificial praise. Mm -hmm. to, have, to offer that sacrificial worship. I don't know about you, but we'll get into the details here in a little bit. Uh, on more of the subject, amen. As we must offer sacrificial praise, we're not to offer fake worship. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. You hypocrites! You didn't do what Isaiah the prophecy said to you. He said, this people draw nigh with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He said, you're acting like you're giving God praise, but you don't really mean it. I know about you, but when you and I raise our hands, we should be meaning it. Can you say amen? We should be meaning what we're saying. When you say, I love you, God, that means you need to mean what you're saying. Jesus said there's a generation that is, they're offering fake worship. <coughs> they're offering fake praise. They're offering a counterfeit. Let me tell you something. God doesn't want a counterfeit. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to glorify him. Amen. He wants you to thank him for everything he's done for you. But we live in an unthankful generation. Some say amen. 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 The Bible says in the last days they'll be unthankful. They'll be unholy. They care more about the pleasures of themselves than the pleasures of God. Amen or oh many. Are we living in a generation that has forgotten what God has done for us? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we living in a time where we don't offer the sacrifice of praise and worship to God. Are we living in a day where the church is far asleep? As in the Gospel of Matthew, there's ten virgins. Five had oil, five had not. But they were all asleep before the announcement of the bridegroom. Are we asleep at the wheel? Are we asleep at the podium? Are we asleep as we worship God? Wake up! Wake up! Because our redemption draws nigh. Our redemption draws nigh. I don't know about you, but we need to start looking through the east. Can you say amen? Things that way or that way? I forgot where it was. But we need to look through the east or south. There's a difference between what real and fake. Jesus answered him. Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. 
First of all, the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, that you and I will love God. We should put God before anything and everything in our lives. Someone say amen. 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 We should put God first. So, uh, come on, I know I'm preaching at the choir today, right? <laughs> Have we been slipping? Have we been slipping and fallen short? We should put God first because he put us first in his life. He created everything first before he created us. You know he created us last and gave us dominion over the whole entire world. First day he created the heavens and the earth. How many remember that? Mm -hmm. Next time he created the light, all that stuff. And then he created all the trees and the great seas and the herbs and fish and animals. And finally got to what? Day number six and he created mankind. He said, let us make man in our own image. And we'll give man dominion over all of this. And God watched Adam as he began to name all the creatures that he created. The elephant, the whales, everything. And whatever Adam called it, that's what God called it. I don't know about you, but God created everything before us. And after he created us, he gave it all to us. That's a wonderful God. Can you say amen? He said, let man have dominion. I'm thankful because guess what? What if he made the dinosaur dominion over us? A lot of us would be lunch right now. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad he made us in his likeness? Jesus answered him first of all the commandments. Hear, O Israel. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God is one of Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And then he said, real worship involves what participation? Acts chapter 14, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. These all continue in one accord in prayer and supplication with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. See, real worship involves participation. You and I got to become participators. I don't know about you, but that means you got to raise your hands. That means you got to get up your hands and knees and pray and ask God to help you. That means you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. That means you need to put God first back in your life. That means you and I need revival. Someone say amen. 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 That means we need to get down and do what we need to do and do it good before the Lord. Amen. When I put God first, guess what? I'm praying to Him. I'm reading His Word. I'm seeking His face. I'm doing His will. I'm honoring him. But when I turn around and don't do these things, I'm not honoring God. It's lip service. Oh, I love the Lord. And never think about him. Oh, I love God. You know, are we to think about God only one day a week? Shouldn't we think more about God every day of the week? Real worship involves participation. These all continue with one accord in prayer, supplication, with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his what? His brothers. True worship begins with what? Being a participator. 
It means come together and pray. The Bible said that they continued in what? One accord. They dropped everything else out of their life and came together and had prayer. You know what's wrong with the church today? And I'm saying the church in general. We're offering fake worship. We honor the Lord with our lips. But our heart is far from him. Mm-hmm. Amen, Amen. Amen. We're not going to have true worship until we what? Sacrifice the flesh. Amen. We gotta nail this carcass to the cross. Because Jesus did. And when we kneel at the foot of the cross, that is when we begin to move and work in the spirit again. Because we're sacrificing ourselves to do God's will and God's bidding. Amen? What else does it say here? That means what? That means forcing ourselves to pray and not giving to what? Tiredness. Oh, I'm just too tired to do it. I, I think I'll stay home. I'm just too tired. How do you know what I'm talking about? Forcing ourselves to conform our thought patterns to see God's desire and not ours. What else does it say? I'm not naturally going to start praying in the Spirit, but the longer I dwell in my prayer mode, I will defeat the flesh and begin to what? Dwell in the Spirit. Why? Because I'm forcing myself. this flesh become obedient to the spirit because God said there's a well the apostle Paul said it he said there's a wrestling match inside of me he said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak how many of you have been having battles in the flesh lately? Mm-hmm. well we could probably all raise our hands yeah. I just don't I just don't feel like praising God today. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like I should go back there now and pray with the pastor when he has prayer time. I want to do something else. Hello? There's a lot of things we can think of. How many have God woke up in the middle of the night? Oh God, I want to sleep. God says, I want you to pray. (laughs) So I'll get up and go pray. Why? Because that's what he wants. He's not going to let me go back to sleep until I pray. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen, I don't know how many hundreds of times. I said, you're not going to let me go back to sleep, are you? No. Not until you pray. So everybody that he brings on my mind, I'll begin to pray for. Why? Because this is what God wants me to do. The body is naturally tired. It's naturally worn out. It's naturally defeated. The flesh doesn't want to pray, but the spirit wants to. Sometimes the biggest battle that we have on the day we're going to do something really important for God and we don't know it. And that's when the enemy will attack you. And it's up to you to say, I'm not going to be defeated today. I'm standing my ground. I'm going to battle that that doubtful spirit away from I'm going to battle that spirit of lust that's trying to, what? 
trying to seduce me. How many know what I'm talking about? I'm going to battle that. I'm going to battle it. Because if I give into it, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to be robbed of what God wants me to have. A breakthrough for each of us. As we continue, why don't we have more breakthroughs? Most likely, we're not spending enough time in worship. How many agree with that? Mm-hmm. Most likely, we're just not spending enough time in worship. I know it's hard for Melanie to get up and read the songs and, and sing song after song. A lot of times, you don't know the songs. And I understand that. But in order to be what? An overcomer, you're going to have to become what? A participator. You're going to have to participate and learn those songs. Can you say amen? And learn and enjoy it. I don't know about you, but, I, but today I thought the world the, the, was all done. The world. I'm just using her for analogy. Not, using, not saying there's anything she's doing wrong. Nothing. I'm just using her as an analogy. Using me as an analogy. But you know what? We're God's cheerleaders to cheer you on. Can you say amen? It's important that you and I, what? Have those breakthroughs. And the only way we're going to have that breakthroughs is we draw nigh to Jesus said, not draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. You and I must come closer to God when we come into worship. We must let everything else go out of our thought patterns. We must drive our minds completely empty in order to fill it up with the Spirit. That means I need to unhook from the flesh. Because the flesh will bring up everything there is. Oh, I forgot to get that today. Oh, I got to get it after church. Oh, I got to. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. We got to come and empty our minds in order for God to fill our hearts. And not only way that's going to happen is what? Worship. And praise him and glorify him. Oh God, I love you. I love you, God. I love you. I love you. How many love God? How many feel the spirit in? Wow, this spirit is so strong. I love you, God. You know why I know it's strong? Because guess what? The enemy is trying to make you tired. Hello? <laughs> That's why God's spirit is strong. Amen. I can feel it. It's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. I've seen the spirit so strong in church services like this that it becomes so cloudy and dark in the sanctuary that you can't see. You could take a knife and cut the look like fog. You could like take a knife and cut. That's how thick it is. And let me tell you something. When you see that type of anointing called the Shekinah glory of God, then you're going to see breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. You're going to see your family. You're going to see your whole entire family come to God. You're going to see all your friends come to church and come to God. You're going to have breakthrough after breakthrough. You're going to get so filled up in the spirit and you say, wow, what is this? I've never had this before. What else? Why don't we have more breakthroughs? If we're going to fight spiritual warfare, we're going to have to have to come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving and cry out to God. We've got to be participators and there's no standing on the sidelines. Only spectators stand on the sidelines and miss all the blessings. You want someone else to get your blessing? 
just become a spectator. Boy, they're sure getting it. Boy, they're really getting it. Well, how come I'm not getting it? Well, you got to become a participator. you got to get in there. I know about you, it's fun watching it all. But it's more fun when you're involved in it. And you're winning. You're winning. Oh, let's look on. What part of a tater family are you? Or are we? Are you a participator? Come on now, a spectator. Are you a motivator? Are you an agitator? <laughs> Irritator, hesitator. <laughs> Why don't we become imitators in Christ? What part of the tater family are you? I almost got a whole bunch of taters. <laughs> and passed them all out. <laughs> and put names on them. But I was thinking, I said, I was kind of, uh, I thought about it. Could you imagine taking your own potato home and it's called a participator? Or an agitator? Or a complainer? Is there a complainer? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> a worship hater. What part of the Tater family are you? Are we? Can we say anything good about anything anymore? Well, you guys all will sure look nice today. I'll say that. And guess what? You guys look great, all of you. I'm going to just come out and just let you know how I feel about you. But the rest of the world out there, they're all sucking their thumbs. Some of them, amen or oh man. Mm -hmm. And if they're not sucking their thumb, guess what? They're mad. They're mad at the world. You don't want to be an irritator or an agitator. Larry's an agitator. How many of you know? <laughs> No, I'm an irritator. <laughs> He's an irritator. <laughs> I don't know. I think sometimes I could be an agitator. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hands raise their hands. Yeah. 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 You, you just get all over me. <laughs> but what should we become? Participators. Motivators. You and I need to motivate each other. Encourage one another. Encouragers. Can you say, man, there's a whole thing, a whole bunch of words you put on there. I looked on there, I, I, I googled it, the last word tater, you'd be surprised at how many words came up with that last part of that adjective or pronoun, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, but it all comes down to this. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? Whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. This is what God wants you to do. Amen. I think that is. God is looking for men and women that will serve him. Ezekiel 22, 30. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. Stand in the gap before me for the land. That I should not destroy it, but I couldn't find anyone. He said, I couldn't find no one. God's looking for someone to stand in the hedge. Stand in the gap. Are you that person God is looking for? Are you that person that wants to make a difference? I don't know about you, but before I became a preacher, I told God, I want to make a difference in the world. Man, I hope I have. Can you say amen? I hope I have. That's the one thing that why I became a preacher. I went home, told my dad, I said, God, save me tonight. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I said, I think he called me to be a preacher. My dad just grew totally silent. Didn't say a word. 
I don't know if I was an agitator that night or a motivator, but I can tell you one thing. I was sure bold in the Lord. Can you say amen? Yeah. I was bold. And went on and told my family I became a Christian. You and I need to get that boldness back. Get that boldness back. God's looking for men and women. Stand in the gap. God is looking for people who will be called by his name. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto their prayer. That is made in this place. That's when we will have breakthroughs. It's when his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and seek his face. That is when we will have what? Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs, my Christian friend. God's looking for people who will be called what? By his name. I think it's amazing when someone picks you up, picks you out of the crowd and says, are you a Christian? I said, yeah. Set your shows all over you. I said, well, thank you. And that's what it's supposed to be. My light should shine that others should see it. There's a lot of things that help define us and help us draw closer to the Lord. And guess what? The greatest thing that defines us the most is our prayer and our humbleness before the Lord. Amen? He said, my people which are called by my name, my name shall humble themselves and pray. And what? Seek my face. Seek my face and turn from what? Turn from the things they used to do that are wrong. I don't know, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things that I don't do. Why? I turn away from them places. I turn away from them because it's not the right place to go to. It's not the right place where my light will shine. There's some places I just don't go. Won't go. Why? Because I've turned myself away from them type of places in my life. And guess what? If you're having a problem with that, you need to come before the Lord and humble yourself and cry and seek his face and turn from those wicked ways. Then I will what? Hear from heaven and I will forgive them of their sin and I will what? Heal their land. And guess what? Once God forgives you of it, heals you, guess what? He doesn't expect you to go backtrack back into that lifestyle again. He delivered you from it. I don't know about you, but one time you were a super corrupt person. Like Zacchaeus was in the Bible. The Bible says he was a tax collector, but he, he'd done so much evil and so much wrong that he told the Lord, he said, because of what you did in my life, I'm going to, if I took anything from any man, I'm paying back fourfold. Jesus said, surely you have found salvation. Turn from your wicked past. Turn from it, can you say amen? Turn from your wicked past. Turn away from it. Humble yourself to God. Humble yourself to God. The Apostle Paul said, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I can do this. I can live a holy life. I can live a life filled up with the Spirit. I can live a life devoted to Jesus Christ and His church. I can live a life before God. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, I can't do it without. 
but I can sure do it with him. I can do it with him, brother. I can't do it without him. I've already tried that and failed. How many else around here know something? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but open the eyes of my heart, God. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. If I want to see God, I'm going to have to open his eyes up. I'm going to have to see what God wants me to see. And not what I want to see. I don't know about you, but I like to put shades on. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> to block out some things, right? But God, he wants you to take them glasses off. He wants you to open your eyes up. Right? Take them off. Take those eye coverings off and look. Look out of your heart. Look out of your heart. Can you say that? Look out of your heart. For the Lord loves you. Would you pray with me? Father God, yes. I thank you. I thank you for allowing us to be here today. I just want to praise you and glorify you. <clears throat> I thank the Lord for being here today. Oh Lord, I thank you for letting me be part of this church and be pastor here. And Lord, maybe there's someone here today that their heart needs to be opened. Is there a person like that? That their heart needs to be opened up, God. They need to open their heart up. I need to open my heart up. I need to open my heart. I need to open my heart, God. I need to pray. I need to seek your face. I need to turn away from the things that are wrong in my life. I need to draw closer to God. I must be what God wants me to be. Oh God, let me draw closer to you. Let me over my heart. Would you come with me today and pray with me by the place of this altar? Come and pray with me.